welcome back to Jaywood Fly Fishing. Now, in case you're wondering why I use that particular clip for this video, that's because we're going to tie the fly that that gargantuan trout was caught on. This is a fly known as the imposter pupa. And it's a very, very good stream and lake fly in bigger sizes. But for streams, I like to use uh, the size 18 and 20. What we're going to tie today is size 20. And we're tying this on a fire hole 317 hook. For the abdomen, as you saw in the opening titles, um, we're going to use UTC 70 denier cream dread. Now I'm starting it back a ways from the hook eye because I want to leave this space open until we get to tying in the wing buds and uh, finishing off the fly. So for right now, this little space right here, which is about one little over one hook eye width long, we're going to call that the no tie zone. So we got our thread started. Now I'm going to tie in the rib, and this is a extra small copper ultra wire. That kind of creaked up on me. I want to try to keep that wire on my side of the hook and Notice we kept our thread out of the no tie zone. Now I'm just going to lay a single layer down to where I consider the bend on this hook and then come back up with one more layer of thread. I'm taking my time here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. No gaps, no overlaps, just one layer back and one layer forward. Now to wrap the rib, I like to turn the jaws of the vise upside down because you see this tiny little gap right here? When you're trying to wrap your rib in there, you've got to fight your bobbin. But if we flip it over like this, and I can get that back in focus, you can see that we've got a nice wide gap to work in. Just wrap that around there, nice and simple. No having to wrestle with the bobbin. And on the very last wrap, I'm going to bring the wire in front of the thread where it's hanging and then bring the thread right up in front of the wire. What that's effectively done is made one loop around the wire. Now I'm going to go behind the wire, in front of the wire, behind the wire again, and then fold the wire back and go over the fold. That locks that wire in place so I can just pop it loose. Very simple. If you're wondering about that technique, I've got a video called Wire Tie Off where I go a little bit slower and explain it a little bit more. Now for the wing buds, we're going to use one bundle of a strand of Antron yarn, and this is a Wopsy yarn in burnt orange, and I've cut off a piece that's about six inches long. Don't go any longer than that because it gets a little tough to handle. And I've tied a knot right in the end. And then I'm going to split these fibers in half. So I've got half of my fibers on one side and half of them on the other side of that knot. I've got another bundle prepared here that's in my uh, this little plastic hackle plier. You can see I've got one strand on one side of the, the uh, clamp and one side on the other. Now I'm going to cut my ends nice and even. And then you can use just a little bit of moisture. I've got a paper towel here off to the side just to kind of control those. 
Now I'm going to make one loose thread wrap right there in front of where our thread went to behind the eye and then come over another wrap right behind that last wrap of wire and pull that antron back so that everything is behind the eye of the hook. Now I'm going to tension my thread, hold that antron straight up and lock it on my side but on the bottom of the hook shape and then bring my thread back up and we're right into the back of the no tie zone. And this is where we're going to start tying in that zone. Now, on the front side of the hook, I'll get back in focus. Da -da -da. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Even up the ends of the yarn. And then a little moisture. And Catch that in with one very loose wrap, pull most of the way back, and then another wrap further back. Now that catches all those ends right in there, and I'm going to pull those downward while I build a bit of a bump. And you can see the thread has kind of unwound itself and gotten flat so that I'm able to make a nice, smooth thorax. And I built that bump, I'm going to work forward to the very end of those, then I'm going to come back one more time. I don't want this too bulky, but I do want a bit of a bulge. I want it obvious that there's a bulge, but not gargantuan. And then we're going to go right, I mean right up behind the eye of the hook, as close as you can get. Pull that antron up and towards the front of the fly and with a little bit of pressure on it drop that thread over it pull your thread away from the eye of the hook out to the right put a little tension on it and then lift that antron so that it's right up on top now we're going to make two more wraps over that holding tension, fold that antron back, and then make two wraps right over the fold. That will lock it down. Now make, depending on the size of the fly, on these little ones, about four or five wraps is all you can get in there without crowding the eye too much. And then come back over the fold with just one wrap, Spin your thread so that it's nice and tight. We want to spin it clockwise, looking down on the bobbin. The bobbin is spinning clockwise. Now I'm going to use my whip finisher and do a minimal whip finish of four wraps right over the fold. Make sure you keep it on the fold. Don't bring it off of the front because that'll that tends to bring the whole whip finish off of the front and then your fold will unravel. Clip the thread, clip that antron, and then the last thing we're going to do is put just a tiniest little drop of thin to head cement right there over the front of that fly. If it gets in the eye, don't worry about it, let it dry. Clear it with your bodkin or the little pin on your nippers and that baby's ready to fish. Once it dries, that head will return back to its natural color. And I like to fish this in streams everywhere. And you can just change the color to match the midges that you've got in your local streams. The good colors for this are this cream, olive, um, chartreuse, and some rivers with the bright green midges, and black, and obviously red. The orange seems to contrast very well with every one of those, and I think it makes the fly extremely visible to the fish. Tie a few of these up. Give them a shot.